welcome to the MBS Show, episode number 301. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Lucky Knight. Hello! I'm Lucky Knight. <laughs> oh, it's my lucky night, isn't it? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, been, it's uh, been a... Gosh, it's been... Oh, an eon. Uh, an eon! Yeah, it's been that. It feels like an eon since I've been on the NBA show. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, and oh, it's 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 good to be back. Hey, welcome back, man. Welcome <laughs> and, back. And um, and congratulations again on um, 300 episodes, man. That is just a huge achievement. And yeah, it's as uh, Silver Cross said. Uh, look forward to no- episode 900. So they <laughs> no oh, pressure. No. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, woof, woof, woof. Uh, what, that'll take me another six years or so? <laughs> oh, God. Um, so, by the way, listeners, um, if you haven't tuned into the 300th episode yet, first of all, you should have already, but if not, make sure you make sure you have a listen because it's a lot of fun. And, uh, well, um, the friends of Norman Senzo, <laughs> give him a lot of love and <laughs> and hijack the show. Yeah, so yeah. it's... Uh, <laughs> It's a lot of fun. Indeed, it's one of those shows. But hey, uh, at least we all had fun and the 300 episode has passed. Now we look into the future with adding a one at the end of the O's. So this is kind of a restart. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> so anywho, Lucky, how have you been, man? It's been a while. So uh, I think everybody at home kind of need a refresh on who you are. For people who don't know or... and maybe some people who do know um, out there in podcasting land is that I hosted a podcast called I am Brony and I'm proud. And that sort of went for about four years, I guess. Yeah. Fully semi-retired from the show. It's uh, I guess the way I sort of made the episodes was well, a lot of work <laughs> as Norma would know. Oh, yeah, <laughs> podcasting. Yeah. It got better work. Um, but uh, yeah, what started off as a, a purely a curiosity to find out what a brony was. Was I a brony? I don't know. And then sort of uh, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Norman uh, Lycan mm-hmm. from uh, Lycan D's Beats, um, sort of, yeah, it sort of helped me sort of propel me in that sort of direction. I remember putting out the word one one day on Facebook to all the, fa- you know, to the Facebook groups on the Australian Facebook groups, because I thought, well, if there's if there's if there's anyone who knows what what a brony is, I thought, well, go to the source, ask the Australian bronies, maybe they know. <laughs> and so it started off from there, and and the first season, you know, it just it, it, and and you think, you know, like people ask me, it's like you know, like the guests I had in the show, like even just in the first season, like um, aviators and um, Michael Dobson, aka Bulk Biceps. Got him in the first season, so I was like, "Oh my god! Like, how did that happen?" Uh, and, and I guess I continued that sort of trend, and um, for more of those what I call special edition episodes, and I guess down the track we had the shakeups in Ponyville, had them twice because the the first time we had the two of them, and then we had the whole band in one episode. Oh gosh, um, as you know, Norman, <laughs> the group episodes are f- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fun. They're, they're fun. Um, <laughs> And but I guess the way I do it, I would record like um, an hour and a half interview, sometimes two hour interview, mm-hmm. and condensing that into thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and Noah was quite right to laugh because I think it took me. If I was to do it nonstop, it would take me twenty hours, oh, um, at wow. least. So that's why I'm sort of semi-retired. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it became it just was so much work, and um, I I was probably churning out more episodes when um well I didn't have a job, yeah, so yeah. that also made a difference. When you don't have a job, kids, uh, <laughs> make content and lots of it to keep yeah. yourself sane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And but <laughs> so but nowadays I've been working in a full time job for the last uh, two and a half years in marketing, and that's real life, folks. Well, or is. Well, not that this isn't real, Norman. Of course it's real. Oh, yeah, it's totally Uh, real. I mean, look at all those (laughs) talking ponies. I mean, those are real. Uh, Yeah, man. Yeah, (laughs) no one's otherwise. And, and yeah, so, and and, and I've, uh, I live in a country town with a, you know, I've moved. It was interesting. Like, I was in Melbourne 
And then I moved to Brisbane, which is sort of where the show, the podcast sort of really sort of came into fruition. And then I moved back to, well, not Melbourne, but two hours away from it. And uh, yeah, I think I, I was still continuing the show then. And I just found that the, the work-life balance was just going a little crazy. So, so yeah, I mean, will there be more episodes? Mm, only time will tell. So uh, I'm, I'm still tinkering about a, a highlights episode. So uh, stay tuned to to the um, to the Twitters and the Facebooks and um, gosh, wherever else the you know the the magic of uh, I'm Brony and I'm proud and <laughs> friendship yeah. um, is so. <laughs> so yeah I, I don't blame you man. I don't blame you I mean um, with my scenario and how my show evolved was okay I was a stickler for how to maintain quality and whatnot, and everything needs to go by the books like okay we need to do this we need to do that okay we should do this okay um, there should be a script here no. and then like I, I think I forgot like either two years ago I said you know what I'm just gonna let loose I cannot take the pressure of doing this very neat and tidy. And a lack for a better word, I made it sloppy and it works. <laughs> mm, sloppy Joes. And I guess, well, uh, unlike you, Norman, I'm a perfectionist. So that's a, that's my, my own worst, my own worst enemy. I guess. I, I'm a perfectionist too. I'm a perfectionist too. I know when to use it and when not because um, <laughs> I, I think for me personally, I do the perfectionist part during editing because when recording, you just want to have fun because no nobody mm. likes to be controlled. If, seriously, right now, if you mess up and say something bad that Sweetie Bot didn't like, Sweetie Bot will just do it later on. I mean, she, she's... I uh, love uh, Sweetie Bot. Yeah. As they say it in the industry, fix it in post. <laughs> Oh, it's fixing a post. My goodness, like I, I know that say too well, and <laughs> in, you know, in media production, and and generally, if someone says we'll fix it in post, generally that's when you run. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, uh it's like no, no, we got to get it right here because uh, it's you know the more like you know they say the any shortcuts you take in you know in pre production. You pay, you pay for in production. Oh, yeah. If you keep taking shortcuts, the whole thing is going <laughs> to suffer. But unless you're Norman Sanzo and you know how to do it right and you are not bound by the perfectionist demons like I am, um, <laughs> you are going to churn out 300 episodes, my, my peeps. <laughs> but here's my counter argument. Once yeah. you record everything, like record everything, and you listen back to it, Oh, there's things that I don't like. I can cut it out. So in actuality, it works both ways. I do agree with what we said because uh, get it right the first time, that means you don't have to edit that much. But if you take everything, that means you got more content and more laughs. Yeah, I love laughs. <laughs> but anywho, but anywho, uh, it was nice catching up with the whole backstory and a bit of history of how we yeah. do things. But you know what? Let's get into the news. And... Uh, Lucky, right. you mentioned before that you're working in a new place now with marketing and whatnot, right? Yeah. So, yeah. how about this? Would you be interested to work for WB Games in San Francisco? Oh, I see. I see what you did there, Norman. You know what? J judging by their most recent photo <laughs> on, on Twitter, <laughs> I would say, yeah. Um, it's kind of funny because uh, my... um. Uh, my younger brother, mm -hmm. he's actually um, he's actually a 3D animator oh. for a um, a lead of a very leading game company in the world, actually. Okay. So, All right. um, if, if it's any if it's any, it's probably not me, but it would be him. <laughs> yeah, I guess in my family, I'm 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 the brony. <laughs> uh, so you know, I I love them pones. So, oh gosh, yeah. What a photo. Uh, I know. I mean, goodness. I, I, it makes you wonder about the applications <laughs> to, to WB Games. It must have just gone through the roof. Yeah. But okay, um, just to put a backstory on what we're talking about. Uh, recently, WB Games in San Francisco posted out a tweet. Um, them saying, uh, our studio is a brony-friendly environment. Seriously, any brony out there who 
wants to work for WB. We're hiring. And they insert hashtag Bruni Army and URL link. Uh, I think that URL could be their link for their job opening. And I think so, yes. Uh, they're hiring. So if you're good at doing games and you're Bruni, that'll be interesting. Get onto it, people. Get onto it. WB Games wants you. And it seems that they are looking for senior game producer, associate manager, PR and social media, contract, publishing data analyst, game analyst, manager publishing analytics, senior game software engineer, UA associate analyst, contractor, director. You know what? There's a lot. Uh, Art Director is also one of them. And you know what? Some of the uh, job listing here are kind of hard to believe if you're a brony and you got that title and some of them are believable like uh, art director yeah mm-hmm. still still uh, if you are go ahead and wb does a lot of good games uh, if i do remember right they're involved with injustice that's the superhero fighting game and also the Lord of the Ring Assassin's Creed style game. I forgot what it's that called. Mm, sounds cool. But still, it's one of those things where, hey, if you're interested, go check it out in the show notes. Maybe you'll get a job and you'll uh, do one of the greatest games like the S Creed for Lord of the Rings or either, what you call this, um, Injustice. I-, I don't know. Who knows? Or maybe you do a mobile game. <laughs> And maybe you'll do it more justice than, <laughs> than yeah. we ever will know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, if you do get the job, let us know in the comments. Mm-hmm. It'll be fun to know. It'll be fun to know. And talking about games, are you a big fan of D&D? Oh my gosh, am I a fan of D&D. Oh my goodness. Uh, that That's something I sort of got into fairly recently. And I think at one time I was in two uh, pony D&D campaigns via Skype through um, Roll20. My brothers put on their own uh, actual tabletop game campaigns. By the way, you have not lived until you've done a tabletop campaign, Mm -hmm. especially when your brothers are pretty much voice actors (laughs) and they're so animated that it's not necessarily... I mean, people are, you know, if if someone was asking me what D&D is, I would call it board game theater. If it's done right, it's board game theater, but a board game that's constantly evolving and changing. And I think the the brother thing is still going on. And I think, what was it? Two campa- pony campaigns I was on. Um, uh, one got too weird for my taste. Um, so I had to leave that one. You know, things are weird, even if it's for a brony. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and I think we had another one, but that sort of sort of fell apart. But um, they've got, got a new one. And, uh, oh, it's, uh, it's sort of a, it's a, a pony one um, based on the um, master maid uh, scenario, but it's actually to do with the princesses, and um, and we all play guards, and we've all been charged with uh, special duties. It's uncertain whether it's a reward or a punishment, <laughs> but apparently we have to organize the entire Grand Galloping Gala. Oh, God, no. no. pressure! And, but uh, apparently a lot of stuff happens in between, so... Oh, uh, we actually, so, oh, it is cool fun. And uh, uh, we're doing that uh, sort of Sunday nights, um, uh, Melbourne time. So a lot of fun and a great way to end the week or start the week. <laughs> yeah. Although, oh. You know, I, <laughs> there you go. Oh, let me go. Oh, oh, back to, oh, back to you, Norman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is this caught on the list for the Grand Grand Gala? <laughs> but hey, um, oh. I'm, I'm glad that you're having fun. But here's something for you to add into your campaign. Uh, recently, Tales of Equestria released another expansion, and said expansion is called Judge Not by the Cover. And this is one of their new adventures add on. Uh, I'm checking it out on the links below. And you know what? Uh, nothing much is said except for the cover, which is done by the awesome Tony Fleece. But other than that, um, nothing to say because there's no description of the, uh, what you call this story. Have you played the Tales of Equestria games? I uh, can't say I have. It, it. This might be the first time I've heard of it. Oh, really? No. You... 
Oh, there, there you go. It's like, oh, what? This guy calls himself a brony. He doesn't know about this. It's like, oh, oh, give no, me a man. break. The brony, the brony net is so huge. I, I don't blame you, man. I don't, I don't blame you on this oh. one. Like, this one specifically is a very niche kind of story in between because nobody really knows or plays the Tales of Equestria uh, RPG. I personally have the first book and I got no idea how to play it. Like, also finding a group of people to play it with and stuff. I, I'm no uh, D&D expert, but I played a few games with one of my GM buddies and that's just for Pathfinder. And that's mm-hmm. fun. Yep. And that's not only related. And that's one of those, one of campaigns where you just make a character one day, uh, throw it out there. If it dies, it dies. If it lives, it lives. Uh, one of those quick campaigns just to play for the weekend. But with this one, I, I don't know how to play this one. Like, I try to read the system and whatnot. And my play group really doesn't know how to RPG. So, yeah, even if you're the DM, you try to lead them to, you know, suggest something because one of your characters there knows how to speak with animals. Why don't you voice the animals I'm trying to talk to? Oh, God. <laughs> First time. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those flowers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are the Fluttershy of this campaign. I but did. I, I totally did agree it. with you, Norman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, oh, well, and uh, but I, you know, even more, it was good that you were mentioning Norman. One shot campaigns are so much fun. I think we did a tabletop one, and my brother came up with a one shot campaign just to do with goblins. Oh, and. And it was really weird because we uh, th- we all we were, we there were characters to pick from, so it's all pre pre done. And I think we did it because the main campaign we just wasn't ready. But it was kind of weird because it took us an hour before <laughs> we started the game because we're goblins, right? So we're we're not really organized at all, <laughs> and we got to all c- kinds of crazy shenanigans. So if you haven't tried D and D before, listeners. Give it a go. Really do give it a go. It's so much fun. Yeah. Although I'm probably, I guess, advantaged because, you know, coming from an artistic family and it's like, yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, but, you know, but there's some people have been playing D&D for many, many years. Having the system called uh, with Roll20, I can't imagine at the time before it where, you know, the only way you could do it was tabletop. And it's, um, but I encourage people to try both, mm-hmm. to do both because, it's uh, just to get to get a gauge, and I guess, and you quickly know who's a good DM from a bad one. <laughs> and wait, uh, just to make um, uh, clear, Roll Twenty is a application for the PC, right? Oh, it's it's internet based. Oh, okay, so it's web based. Yeah, it's you just, website. All right. Just just need to make sure that everybody knows because Roll Twenty could be something else too. <laughs> oh, oh. We're not saying rule twenty, whatever that could be. <laughs> oh, no, I don't uh, know. But yeah, I don't know. We don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't know. Uh, or, or do we Google it? No, right no, now? no. Anywho, so, um, yes. <laughs> rule twenty dot net. All right, uh, that, that's that's good. That's good. Uh, go check it out if you want to try. And I have a recommendation for you to hear uh, DM stories. He may not be the best, but I was highly entertained and inspired by his story. Uh, I would recommend. YouTube searching the Spoonie Bard or the Spoonie Experiment. He has a channel where he tells his old DM stories or his RPG stories from Netrunner to Dungeons and Dragons to Call of Cthulhu and stuff. Like he played those games and he tells the story of his experience. And also, if I remember right, he also played the Star Wars RPG. And he complains about where everybody wants to be a Jedi and nobody really wants to play the pilot. <laughs> That's right. Oh, man. Because as we know, what is it in the, what was it? Episodes four to six? Mm-hmm. Jedis can't fly ships. Oh, yeah, yeah. Apparently, could they, could, it's, it's, somehow they've forgotten in the prequels. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jedis could do it all, but apparently they couldn't. Oh. Well, but in all oh, honesty, but, also, but in all honesty, in. Four, five, six. Luke doesn't really yeah. know how to do anything, and I think he's the last Jedi before Yoda pass away, before Obi Wan pass away. 
So what? Obi passed away in Spo- the first <laughs> Spoiler movie. Spoiler alert. It's hours. been how many Everyone years dies. now? <laughs> Everyone dies. <laughs> don't, it's like Game of Thrones. Don't, don't, don't let them to anyone. Oh, yeah. But hey, talking about flying, right? You know, if I were to fly to you, I would probably take a Singapore Airlines or Virgin Atlantic Airlines to go to you, right? Something like that? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm. Yeah. So I, I think the most obvious one would be Singapore because I live close to it. So I probably take a cab down to the borders, go to the airport and book a flight to Australia there. That would be the most efficient way. And you know what? While taking my five hour flight, I think I'll probably watch a movie. Could you guess what movie I'm going to watch? <laughs> oh, I think I do, Norman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there can be only one. And the one the my- Little Pony movie, yes. which is now available on Singapore Airlines and Virgin Atlantic <laughs> as part of their media catalog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now I need to double check oh, Virgin. Uh... I need to double check Virgin. Virgin's <laughs> Australian flight. No, it's a Great Britain flight. But I do know they also established in uh, Australia, right? Oh, I'm not sure. I, I, I don't. I believe it or not, listeners. Oh, uh, I'm still yet to have my first overseas trip. I haven't been out of Australia yet. Oh man, you had the chance to go to Thailand. <gasps> I know. Oh gosh, I saw the footage from the um, uh, from the co- from your con, and it's like, oh, well done. Oh, thank well you, man. Done. Thank you. Now that I'm sort of swimming in dough, I I think it's <laughs> not going to be a problem. <laughs> well, wait, wait for the next one then. Wait for the next one then. But still, uh, getting back yeah. on track. Yeah, so if you guys don't know, uh, sometimes long flights from location A to B that takes more than an hour, you have in-flight entertainment. And sometimes they put in cartoon shows, movies, dramas, comedies, and so on. I think with this month, I think, uh, the flight catalog for Virgin Atlantic and Singapore Airlines they're showing the My Little Pony movie, which just released... Well, uh, it released in October for the States and where I was, and November for you, right? Yeah, I think so. And uh, it actually turned into a brony meetup, and it was a pretty good turnout. So, uh-huh. uh, I, I actually, forget, never forget it. I, I, I got to see some friends that I hadn't seen for a while in person. And uh, actually... And uh, Lycan, uh from Lycan These Beats, he was down in Melbourne as well. So he, I, I think he went to all the My Little Pony movie meetups, if I think. <laughs> wow, that time. that's cool. That's cool. Uh, and then, and he went, and they did the whole sort of a uh, whole Brony trip. Like he went to BronyCon in the States, and then he went to UK. Um, he, he, he li- you know, I, I can't imagine living what living with Forrest Wayne would be like. And I was oh, like, wow. wow. And it looks like his jet set it off again, but I don't know where he, where he's going. It's like there's nothing stopping the Lycan train. Oh, man. I mean, or plane, should I say? Oh my goodness, Lycan plane. He's a brony. It's <laughs> a plane pony. There you go, <laughs> plane pony confirmed. Oh wow! Um, but listeners, uh, you gotta check out the trailer, the commercial for the My Little Pony, where My Little Pony actually appears, because uh, that's a bit hilarious in itself, isn't it, Norman? Um, Especially how it's been paired up. Uh, paired up with the clip beforehand and uh, care to <laughs> enlighten the listeners if they haven't seen it already. No, I'm confused. Uh, you, 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 you tell me, man, because I haven't heard. Oh, I have. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh yeah. Uh, so yeah, the the trailer uh, for the uh, the new sort of. I think it's like did they say over three hundred or is it six hundred movies? Oh, anyway, it's a lot and. What happens is there's like um, it shows clips from all the different you know shows and movies, and before My Little Pony come uh, the movie comes on, it's uh, time to shine. Mm-hmm. The what clip beforehand is an action movie with uh, with Jackie Chan, I believe. So uh, so Jackie Chan, My Little Pony. <laughs> I mean, gee, wouldn't that be an awesome team up? And wait, right there, where like, is this one? Uh, Singapore Airlines. Yeah, it was a Singapore Airlines commercial. Oh man, I I, I didn't <laughs> check it out beforehand. Oh, I'm missing out. <laughs> Oh yes, like Norman Santo. If you haven't seen it, <laughs> check it out. I think uh, I, I think I only saw it because uh, I think it was one of the New Zealand bronies, or uh, not New Zealand, Indonesia. How, how did I confuse Indonesia of New Zealand? Oh gosh, where is my brain? <laughs> my brony brain. But 
uh, it was posted on the uh, Australia Brody groups. It's like, oh god, this is just too good. Oh wow! All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Too yeah. good. Yeah, and you know when you watch movies, you have popcorn and stuff. You know where's a good place to keep those popcorns? I don't know, Norman. You have a, you have, you've blanked, blank flanks. You say I should say in a Tupperware, in a pony <laughs> team Tupperware. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there, Norman Santos. <laughs> oh, my segues are terrible. <laughs> oh no, it was very punny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it wasn't even punny. Oh gosh! But anywho, um, it, but you know what? It's not really punny as it is pony. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. But anywho, an Indonesian-based Tupperware manufacturer has listed My Little Pony movie team containers over on their website. So as for now, I only see the three, which are uh, Pinkie Pie, Rainbow Dash, and Fluttershy. Yay! Fluttershy having the love. So that's all. What good. a great week for Fluttershy! My goodness, like you know, the officially the new Equestria Girls uh, episode that's come up with Fluttershy. Now Fluttershy has been is now headlining Tupperware. <laughs> is there nothing stopping the Fluttershy train? <laughs> I my don't goodness. know. I do. Oh my god! Uh, Lucky, click on the link for over on their website. Like, just click on it and just look at the group for the page like even if you don't understand there's some things that you do oh gosh oh gee i want this <laughs> oh man oh that's right this is just just any my little pony tupperware it's my little pony movie tupperware mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and if you take a look oh. see the price here is about 200 indonesian um rupiah and i'm trying to convert it but Take a look see at the top. Uh the group that's selling this. Let's have a look. Feel free to play at home. Yeah, 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 yeah. Feel free, feel free, because I am oh yeah, converter. I already on that. Okay, calculator. Just imagine if just you've been exposed to Indonesian currency for the first time. It's like What? What that is a oh, oh, oh. Um what's this? Hundred and ninety nine rupiah to Australian dollar. What's that? Oh man, my, my my thing is so slow. But anyway, uh, I'll just uh, point it out. If you take a look, see at the way top at the very very top of the website, it says that uh, the group is called MBS Group Tupperwares. <laughs> oh man! Oh man! <laughs> I know. Oh man! You should be getting royalties for this. No man, no man. I I, I do it for the love. I do it for the love. <laughs> All that sweet, sweet brony love. Oh my goodness. How did I miss that? See, I went straight to the ponies, but I forgot the most important thing. The MBS. Oh my goodness. Norman. <laughs> oh, goodness. You, uh, you already got merchandise and you don't even know it. <laughs> my goodness. Oh, oh wow. You, there you go. Uh, okay. I, I'm looking at the Indonesian pricing for the Tupperwares. And oh my goodness. Okay. um, $13? No, uh, one one hundred ninety nine Indonesian rupee ah uh, is about zero point zero one four. Let's just say fifteen zero point zero fifteen cents. The hell? You know what? I look. I I read that up myself, and I was like, that can't be right. Mm. That means like you you'll be surprised because the Indonesian rupee is not that strong compared to our currency. Because even if I go for my local uh, currency, that would make it about 0.057. Let's just say 5.8. It's less than a cent. What the hell? That ain't right. Oh my goodness. All birdies of the world, raid it. Raid the site. Uh. If you've got a currency... If you've got currency to burn, do it. <laughs> oh, oh man. I got no idea how uh, much this cost. Unbelievable. It's like, oh, I don't know. It's up on EQD, so it must be a matter of time before the site gets crashed. Nah, man. Like, <laughs> it's going to be one of those uh, things where it's just very, very confusing. And I don't think they ship internationally because it's a Tupperware group. Maybe the local Tupperware group has their own thing. Oh, man. Ah. <sighs> Well, a brandy could dream, can't yeah, they? Uh-huh. And talking about dreams, mm. let's head into the last news. And what better way to end the news with Trixie and Starlight? <laughs> oh my god! 
rocking thing <laughs> off to oh. the sunset or the starlight or whatever you want to call it. So anywho, uh, if you have been in the brony figure scene, uh, there's a toy line by Hasbro called the fan series. And the fan series are, I would describe top-notch figures that are official and the price are only $20 MSRP. I must buy their toys. Yep, and they did figures like Celestia Nightmare Moon, was it? I think Celestia Nightmare Moon, they did it. And they did for Chrysalis, they did it for Discord, and now they're doing it for this. Oh, they also did the Storm King. So, as for now, there's... Really? Yeah, there's a Storm King figure Gee. out there, which is really nice. So, as for now... How did he land a merchandise deal with Hasbro? <laughs> I don't know. Marketing, probably. As we know. As we know from the movie, Norman, it's all he really talked about. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> what was <laughs> oh. what was the pirate crew transporting? Merchandising. <laughs> Storm King merchandise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. But hey, uh, uh, as for uh, Trixie and Starlight here, uh, the toys are available for pre-order on Entertainment Earth. Oh, they also did a Tempest Shadow and Twilight Sparkle figure fighting. Oh, cool. So there's seven. Sweet. I, I could never buy all this. I don't have the funds to. And the shipping cost is going to be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> shipping that's a good one Norman because it's, it's Trixie and Starlight Glimmer it's technically a ship back uh, paper, am I right <laughs> yeah <laughs> but hey if you guys got the chance go buy it uh, it's a really good model it's a really good buy too but anywho that is the news for this week so let's head into my favorite topic which is what have we been doing with our week and Lucky since you're well the guest or the co-host uh, why did you start? How was your week, man? I guess during the week, I I sort of do a mixture of things. I'm currently designing brochures for one of the uh, uh, divisions of the company. Um, I sort of do a lot of, I work with the TV stuff. And what else were we doing this week? I look after all the social media. So that's almost, that's a full-time commitment right there. So, you know, that's not just the company's Facebook pages I look after. I probably look after about a dozen Facebook pages Probably at least half a dozen are fully active, but still. And updating websites, updating manuals, and uh, yeah, it's sometimes uh, you know I'm doing probably a multitude of things but that's uh, work, throughout the day. Right? That is work. Mm. And and then uh, what I do on the weekends is that I I'm a gl- I'm, I'm a trainee glider pilot, so uh, you know naturally with my <laughs> pony avatar being a Pegasus and. Uh, first real name means light uh i guess as well it's funny because when i moved to um moved to ararat uh it's the town where i live at the moment and um i was trying to get back into dragon boating oh okay um yeah and i did dragon boating for about three or so years and i was with the melbourne flames for about three years and then a year of the brisbane club and then well there was a ballarat club which is about an hour from me but they never returned my calls so i thought well I tried sailing for a little bit, but every time I went sailing, there was no wind. <laughs> Funny. Oh, no. And every time I didn't, they told me how great conditions they had. <laughs> I was like, uh, I, I, I sense a pattern here. So, <laughs> and I got more interested about uh, the sky. So I've, uh, I guess I've traded, uh, I've traded a sea pony for, you know, to be a full-blooded Pegasus. So there you go. Yeah. When I'm not doing that, um, I'm doing emergency service stuff, uh, mainly community stuff. I've got a couple of projects in that. And actually this year, I'm, going to, uh, I'm planning um, a short film or two as well, and maybe a new uh, a new Brony project as well. So um, it's a case of what's the space. So uh, keeping myself busy. And that's, you know, and always on the lookout to find, you know, uh, Mrs. Lucky Knight, <laughs> wherever she may be. Uh, good luck, man. Good luck, man, with that one. And tell me more about the <laughs> gliding, man. Like, how's that? Like, what got you interested in doing that? Oh. <laughs> I think I saw gli- uh, gliding as a as a thing. Um, like in the, I think it was the Thomas Crown Affair, that movie. Mm-hmm. And I thought, gee, that looks like fun. I thought I'm going to do that one day. 
And the funny thing is, when you when you drive into town of, on the highway, you see the big hangers, and it says "gliding, it's fun," <laughs> big bold letters. And I thought, hmm, I'm doing that. I wanted to do that, and I'm going to do it. So I think, yeah, it's. I didn't know when, but I think I what got into it about maybe uh, six months or so, and it's it's all run by entirely by volunteers and. At the moment, um, actually, at the time of this episode, um, I achieved a new personal best. And um, one of the biggest, uh, it's a thing, um, I'm still building stamina, is to you hit your ride on these, um, you know, invisible, um, I call them invisible funnels of hot air. Mm-hmm. And you tend to try to hit your ride and go up and up and up as high as you can. And we actually had a um, winch launch this, uh, this weekend. Which is generally your gliders being pulled at 100 k's an hour by a cable, Ooh. and you just shoot up like, and you shoot up like a rocket. It's uh, it's quite wicked, and uh, and I achieved a new personal best. So uh, I got to uh, 8,000 feet, oh, wow. or technically seven seven thousand feet above um, elevated level. So I forget how that's the meters. I've just beacon feet and and knots, but uh, don't don't want to get it tongue tied. There you go. So. And also, oh yeah, of course, the gyms, and that's keeping me fit as well. So, But the, the gliding thing, yeah, it's – and the way a glider moves, what you can do with it, if if you've ever seen the film Top Gun, it really is you like flying a fighter jet. Like the maneuvers you can do, like tight turns and stuff like that, you know, you just can't help but, you know, think about the danger zone in your head as you're doing it. So, so I was doing turns, and even I was actually – um, had come so close to actually doing a landing this weekend oh. as well. So that was pretty exciting because I was thinking when that was sort of going to gonna happen. So I actually did a lot of the turns required to get into the what we call the final approach. So uh, generally, before you land, you actually have to do a circuit um, of turns. You can't just land because, well, it's, um, it can be quite hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, well, you don't want it too hard. But yes, yeah, and the views are amazing. They really are. The other thing is like on a, it's uh, gliders love hot days because when the, when the sun is really hot it will heat it heats uh, heat up the ground and when the ground is hot the hot air rises and so and gives you lift exactly not the moon rises <laughs> but um it's more of a celestial thing uh-huh. so so yeah and then when you're up there actually by the time we got up to 8000 feet it's actually it's, it's quite cool up there oh. but the one thing I'm still adjusting to the stamina is uh is the is um is climatizing to the atmosphere oh. that because the human body is not made for flying <laughs> so you know like we we are bred for the ground and so it's um it takes some getting used to so um i was definitely pony poop by the end of it so i was about i was up there for an hour but man time is different up there <laughs> you think it you know i thought i was at least there for two hours so but what I got a taste for is that we got up so high, and the ne- next thing is you do, you get out of it, and then you floor it. Ooh. You go really fast. I think we're going seventy-five knots. Ooh, that's fast. Which is, which is, it is fast. And then you apparently you're going as fast as you can until you hop onto the next formal. So what I think uh, about gliding is that gliders and, I mean, you're pilots, but you're basically thermal hoppers <laughs> or thermal chasers. You know, you you're doing. At the moment, where I am with my training, is that it's a lot of work to stay up to get up to get up to. Um, some thermals are nice to you, and you get up. You can you can you can shoot up. You know thousands of feet. You know relative ease. But I've experienced some thermals that are just so difficult and just don't want you there. <laughs> and they don't because they know you're not a bird. You decide you know, and and you see birds flying by and you're just like damn you. Make it look so easy. I need to add something because <laughs> I'm Googling uh, paragliding and they're showing me two things. One is with a parachute and one is with the contraption, with the triangle thingy. Which one are you doing? Oh, oh, which, uh, yeah, sure. Cl- yeah, clarify that the, the gliding we're doing is uh, the powerless gliding. Uh, they're basically planes for, with no engines. Oh, do, those planes with no engines. The one, the, one the, re- the one with the big sort of uh, chair. Uh, you know, fully calm, you know, um, clear canopies. And uh, and I train in a two-seater with the instructor at the back. Could you send a picture or something like that? Because I'm really confused. And probably- Yeah. 
Oh, all oh, right. Oh, of course, of course. Because I'm trying to Google here and I'm not getting. I just. Go- I will send you to our club website. Oh, yeah, good. Da da da. Hey. And um, we also have a whole bunch of pictures that uh, we post on our Facebook page. Um, and actually, speaking of which, I do have pictures to post from today's flight. So there you go. Oh, this. Yeah. Oh, so you're doing a real plane. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh. Not the yellow one, uh, but the the white ones. Yeah. yeah the, the, oh, those those ones. Apparently, that the world record is actually twenty seven thousand feet, almost at commercial um, airspace height. When you're getting above ten thousand feet, you need oxygen. So people have little sort of the oxygen bottles that they take with them. All right, all right, all right. Because, you know, like uh, uh, like Rainbow Dash's ego, it gets a little thin up there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so cool. That's so cool. So, you want to give your club a shout out? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, shout out to Grampian Soaring Club. So, if you by any chance are headed into the uh, Grampians region um, in Victoria, in Australia, uh, look us up because, well, uh, he, we, there are gift vouchers. So, and, um, gee, once... Um, <clears throat> once you uh, once you glide, um, well, some th- some people don't want to come down, but uh, we all have to come down sooner, sooner or later. Yeah, true, true. And yeah, so it's a uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, I'll never forget my first time. It was like <laughs> I don't know what heaven was like, but it's like the serenity is just amazing. So when you're up there, but when you're training, it's a lot of work. But uh, getting there, getting there. Um, also, acrobatics. If you're uh, like I was very early on, a junkie for acrobatics, they do that as well. So loop the loops and um whole bunch of maneuvers. So I know, you know, space is on the cards, but uh, you can actually feel weightlessness for about a second in a glider oh, that's in a loop to loop. So <laughs> that's cool, that's cool. It's fully the cheapest way to feel like an astronaut <laughs> and a fighter pilot at the same time. So um yeah, check us out. All right, you know. And we're on Facebook as well, so we're putting up pictures almost every weekend. So if you want to see what we're doing, that's the best place to um, to find us. All right. Cool, 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 cool. And let's head into my week. And my week has not been as awesome as yours, but it was fun. It was fun. Let's see. Um, <laughs> uh, what did I do? Fun! Fun! Uh, yeah, fun. now I remember. Last week after recording the 300 episode, uh, as per usual, the MBS show always has these derps and my computer started to derp <gasps> mm. derp, derp, derp. derp I had derp, to reinstall derp. Windows <gasps> so that took a good chunk of my editing time <laughs> oh my god <laughs> was um oh my goodness oh like listeners you must feel a pain if any if any of you if any of you have had to reinstall Windows <clears throat> You know how long it takes. Oh, no, it wasn't uh, that long. It wasn't that long. The long part was installing the drivers, updates, making sure everything works. And here's my problem that lead me to reinstalling Windows. Uh, My Google Chrome kept logging me out. Oh, snap. So uh, every time after I close Google Chrome and reopen it, it logged me out even after I inserted my credentials and whatnot. And, well, it gotten to the point where it started to be annoying. I also have, uh, whatchamacallit, this, a malware, uh, whatchamacallit, this um, program called Malware Bytes, and I paid for it, the premium. Mm-hmm. And one of the mm-hmm. jank thing was that the web protection was turned off and I couldn't turn it on. So, you know what? I said, F this reinstalled Windows. Malware Byte was okay, but Google Chrome was not. And I said, you know what? F this, I'm going to use Opera. And Opera's been kind to me. Opera's been really kind to me. Google, you see what you've done? Hey. You see what you've done? But hey, um, <laughs> it, 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 but it all works out. It all worked out. The 300 episode came out as per schedule. And I'm using Opera now. And there's no big difference from Chrome except for the... Okay, there's a few things that I really miss, like Google Image Search. Because when you want to image search with 
Chrome, you can right-click Google Image Search. That's one of the nice things about Chrome. But with Opera, you don't have that. So, oh man, that sucks. Um, one of the few things... So it can't find images, but it can sing, a, it can sing very well then. <laughs> yeah, but no, uh, you still can use Google Image Search, but you just have to use the website version, which is not bad, which is not bad. Mm. Uh, one of the, few, one of the mm. things I like is the site toolbars because I do have... Sorry, because it has uh, Facebook Messenger installed and also WhatsApp installed. And those are the two apps that I use a lot on my phone, but having it on the sidebar while I'm looking at the computer, it's also good. Like, it's awesome. You know what? I'm starting to like Opera. Opera is a very nice app. But the downside is that nothing is tied to your Chrome. Like, you know, Google Chrome has their uh, link account and everything once what you do here goes there and you don't really have to do much with it but hey um i'm learning how to use opera and i'm okay with it i'm okay with it it's is it as fast as chrome you know what i don't see any difference uh, okay one of the few factors is that i have a solid state drive for you lucky i recently rebuilt my pc i built it from scratch i put it in the components and everything so I know what my machine is. And with speed, in all honesty, if you have a solid state drive in your PC, speed is not an issue. What the issue is, though, is your um, DNS. If your DNS doesn't want to play nice, it can really hurt. So this is not a plug, but I use TunnelBear, the VPN app. And what TunnelBear does is it bypass certain things. Like it masks my computer or it masks my IP to be in another country. Like right now, while I'm recording this, my VPN is pinging me via Australia. So I'm trying to get the utmost top quality for our connection. Sweet. Yeah. So you could say your solid hard drive, solid state hard drive was a... Solid investment. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, yeah. Yes, I went there. I went there, listeners. I went there, and I'm not ashamed. Oh, I'm not ashamed at all. But but <laughs> another but but the fun side. But the fun side. Um, been playing games. Uh, I played Sonic Forces, and I finished it, and I I like it. I I really enjoyed oh, it. Yeah. Like Sonic Forces is one of those games where it has hmm, how do I put this? A good analogy is it's like ice cream. It tastes good. It's really sweet and nice, but it's not filling. I take it that um, it's got nothing to do with the um, Sonic meme. Nah, <laughs> no, I do not know the way. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, uh, but who does? <laughs> and who killed Captain Alex? I, I still want to know. <laughs> the world wants to know. I don't know, but um, <laughs> he was killed on screen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but anywho, um, so but yes, yeah, so, oh. but, but anywho, yeah, uh, there's that. I finished Sonic Forces. I played a bit of Dragon Ball Fighter Z. That game is fun. I just need to buy it once I get my paycheck. But oh my goodness, that mm. game is fun. If you're a Dragon Ball fan, you got to buy it because it feels like the anime. And I played with a friend. We did the clashes. We did everything. And oh my goodness, it, it felt like the anime that's all i have to say it felt like the show and uh another thing is uh i've been playing a bit uh this x mankind divided i don't know why but it's fun <laughs> uh it's a really fun game i think it's on the cheap if you want to get it it's not it's no sale i would suggest waiting for sale because that game is stupid old and it's gotta be cheap somehow I think probably 10 bucks on sale. Mm. Who knows? So yeah, there's that. Mm. There's that. But anywho, that's been my week. Um, nothing kind of interesting like yours. Yours is full of flying. Mine is just underground PC work. <laughs> Let me tell you, as soon as I got, out, got onto the ground, oh man, it was, it was so funny. Like, you know, like when you're being on a boat mm -hmm. and you're trying to get your land legs mm -hmm. back, I was trying to get my land legs uh, back from the, from being in the sky and it was kind of weird like i was walking around and it, like felt like my my legs were like tree trunks mm -hmm. like oh god it's like 
oh it was like oh it's like and i also forgot to put out that it's actually a very big workout especially when you're starting out like me mm-hmm. like like you you know you do use a fair amount of muscles as well to to move maneuver the plane um or you know you're trying to focus your uh, muscles as well it, it, it's funny you're talking about games and it, it's a uh, I, I've got an, I've I've got an Xbox and I've got you know a stack of games I'm so, supposed to get into, but the game that I play mostly is it's a Team Me Team Legends game on my mobile phone. <laughs> oh no, you're one of I'm those. I'm so I'm so I'm so addicted to it. I I, I can't I, I mean it's it, one of the things like you know when you want to you know you try it. I don't know. It's almost like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game and Pokemon had a baby and that's what they came up with. Because you're trying to constantly level up all your characters so you can prog- um, progress further in the game as well. Like if you're doing a story campaign, you can only get so far until you until your characters are leveled up enough to pass the, the next set of levels. So um, at the moment, I'm in the sort of the final sort of story stage, but I can't progress any further in the easy. And this is just easy mode, and I can't get any further until I level my, up my characters to at least level seventy. So. At the moment, I've I've leveled up. I've almost leveled up all the possible characters to sixty, but I've got all the gold level ones, which are can be leveled up to eighty. Oh, okay, yeah. And then I actually got, and then I've got platinum ones, free platinum ones now that they released in a new update, and they can be leveled up to one hundred. Oh so, oh my how, god! How much did you pay? Thanks. How much did you pay? Actually, the game is free. Yeah, uh-huh, but how much did you um, pay? <laughs> I okay, okay, so. I think when I was starting out, I did uh, I did spend a little bit of dosh on to get the mutant because <laughs> I just I just didn't on the on the way didn't want to wait and it's all about that sweet sweet mutant <laughs> oh yeah oh that's where they get you man that's where they get you man <laughs> but thanks to the new update the way they've redesigned it is that in the tournaments that you play um, all the the games you play the the PvP stuff. You get a lot of mutagen, and I think that's what people were bugged about that they you couldn't get that much from the um versus mm-hmm. mode, and now you're getting tons. You're getting heaps, and it's like so. It's like, gee, now I can level up a character every day. Oh, that's good. Sometimes I can level up a character twice in a day. Um, just making sure I just got that extra mutagen for the next day to level up. So you know, because you want the perks, you want to see, you want to get all the go get all the daily missions covered. So uh, can't get enough of it. Uh uh, I love it so much. <laughs> if you like it, man, it's all good, man. Don't let me say bother you anything. Yeah, don't, don't ignore what I say. But no, uh, from I'm looking at the pictures here, and from what I can tell, it's based on the Nickelode, the recent Nickelodeon Turtles, and they also have Correct. some of the movie turtles in it. The but ugly ones, like nobody really wants. I I do not acknowledge their existence. By the way, they don't. They, those movies do not exist for me. I have never seen those movies, and will I ever? Oh, see You those gotta movies? see it. They man. look giant. They look awkward. You gotta see it. No, man. I will not. No. I will not. I will not. I seen both oh. in the theaters, by the way. Oh. And here's the thing: it's one of those things where. Yeah. Okay, my mind is dead. I'm just watching this because I want to be entertained. It's produced by Michael Bay. Come on, but it's not directed by Michael Bay. So there's hope, right? There's hope, right? Oh my goodness! This is what happens if Michael Bay were to direct the movie. But instead of big giant robots, it's scaly mutant turtles. But hey, it's still fun. It's still fun. My childhood is not ruined. In all honesty, it's a better improvement than the. 80s cartoon because this one at least they fight with the sword and oh man in all honesty the movie was schlock and I got schlock I knew it was schlock and I got schlock so it's all good but um, if you want to have a fun entertaining time I would suggest the Nickelodeon uh, TMNT show that was out in the 2012 was it i forgot but still uh it was out now it's done and now they're rebooting with another turtle series i and honestly i got no idea why they <laughs> want to do that of course they are um i actually have seen the <laughs> uh, first couple of seasons mm-hmm. of um of the nickelodeon tmnt mm-hmm. stuff um but i um i saw i think it was the first episode of the third season i think 
and that's when they went into space. Ooh, that one. That is season and three, I think. Uh, yeah, three or four, three or four. They just sort of like what they call it. Jump the shark. They really did. I think I I stopped watching it. It was just because I um I enjoyed very much the two thousand three to two thousand seven uh, those... um series. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. TMNT. Yeah, and they did the space thing, but it was a very well fleshed out <laughs> plot that had a lot of parallels and stuff. And the Nickelodeon ones, like, yeah, I mean, even I, I mean, they didn't. They sort of made an in in sort of move in episode gag. It was like even the turtles didn't know what was going on. <laughs> like the guy, like the the the, the fugitoid uh. was going a million miles an hour. And it's like, wow, the turtles are even confused as <laughs> us. So uh. I mean, it had that going, but I don't know. I must be old fashioned. I liked. I like fleshed out storytelling. But right, okay, I understand, I understand. But one one of the things I like about this one is that uh, what they did with Leo, uh, the voice actor for Leo from season one to two, uh, they changed oh, his voice. Oh, yes. So to make it not yeah. too obvious or to make the explanation of why his voice changed is that Strider beat him up real bad and hurt his voice. And the recovery process made his voice a bit off. And the final voice that they got him at was the voice of Seth Ro Seth no Seth Rogan. Who was the guy? Um give me a second. Se- Seth yeah. Green played Leo in the first season. No no no. And he chose to leave. Really? Yes. And came back again? No, 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 no you got it wrong. Was, you got um, it wrong. No, I think no. it was the guy. Yeah, you got it wrong because here's the thing. The only reason why I kind of knew the voice is like, hey. I know this voice. Isn't this Joker from Mass Effect? And it was. Because um, the first two voice yeah. actors for Leo, I, I didn't know why, but they changed. Uh, they changed it or they quit or whatever it yeah. was, but it was the first two. Well, yes. S- Seth Green, who played Leo originally in the um, 2012 series, uh, he left after two after two seasons. No, I, um, the, you, apparently, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was too cool for him. No, you I got guess. it wrong, man. You got it wrong. Um, no, 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 no. It's the other way around. Sure? He was the last. Okay. He was the third and final. Of oh, the final form, like the Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we don't talk about Doctor Who yet because the final form of the Doctor we kind of know, but it's not really established yet. <laughs> <laughs> ah, boys. But anywho, if you guys at home have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsradio.gmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. My personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Lucky, where can the good people find you, my friend? Oh, gosh. Where can they find me? Well, I've got the, the old humble YouTube channel and SoundCloud and Facebook and Twitter and DeviantArt. <laughs> but but the, the, one that, the one to rule them all is uh, at I B A I P show um, on Twitter and Facebook, and it's the same username on SoundCloud and and YouTube, I think. So and and DV dot so so many things, so many little time. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Oh, so yeah, um, and if you're wondering, in that, uh, will there be more episodes of um, of the show of the podcast? Oh, only time will tell. It's like it's it's. Uh, um, yeah, being a content creator, being a you know a creative, you know it's. I think yeah, you get to a point where we like push it comes to show. It's like, oh, oh yeah, need to do it, need to do it. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. And of course, kudos and congratulations again to you, Norman, on um, three hundred episodes. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. And also, please subscribe, rate us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvaLive dot com. Links are in the show notes. Also, if you don't mind, please listen to the NBA Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you'll catch me, Silver Quill, Sapphire Heart Song, talk about the Pony episodes, comics, and movies. Sometimes we like to talk about other things, like probably the best movies of 2017, or worse, we, we're not picky, or even uh, Miraculous Ladybug. We, we done that one for the Christmas special. It was fun. Or my favorite, Kung Pao Into the Fist. That was a really good movie. A really, really fun movie. Uh, next target goal is going to be UHF. I wish somebody would sponsor us. <laughs> Talking about the sponsoring, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com and coffee.com. If you support, you'll get 
access to the review and discussion podcast a week early from the regulars. So that's something to look forward to. Exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I like to thank Nurkel Cat and Victoria Star Stream, Marcel Leg, Amy, Mark, and also Charles. Thank you so much, guys, for the awesome support. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I have been and will hopefully continue to be Lucky Knight. <laughs> and we'll guys see you next week. See ya. Bye bye.